Today's not going to be a start to finish on uh, what I've done, but uh, just basically an update. I'll just say this is an update video. So I am done with the IFS. If you look at that, you can see both of them drooped and hanging right there. Uh, I still need to uh, kind of do, I guess, some final, final touching on the welding on top of there. But uh, they are up. And I'll attach some video or uh, some pictures here and here. This is the stance, and this is it being stuffed. So, kind of gives you an idea of the articulation and how much movement I can possibly have. All right, so uh, back to here. Um, I welded. You can see the the angle. You know, this angle to that angle has to be done when you're dealing with the. IFS and uh, making bigger travel so um, This one is touching just slightly, but it's all right because it's not going to be drooped down that far or it's going to be restricted lack of better words but uh, Anyways, it went fairly well So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cage off take all that out start rebuilding the uh, 9.25 diff and I'll put in the lunchbox locker and finally be able to expose the oil pan to where I can fix this oil leak and clean this up. I'm so sick of staring at it. Um, and then, uh, all right, so let's move on. So I've been thinking a lot about steering. This is the three quarter ton steering here. And uh, the problem is, is no one makes any steering for IFS like this the only thing's close is a toyota but i've seen some of these toyotas on these races uh break on their steering because they're just not beefy enough for their weight so what i can use is this three-quarter joint but or a three-quarter um i guess you'd say cross member along with the tie rods but uh, i'm not going to i did buy some barnes uh tie rod here and uh let's talk about that for a second well, I just discovered something. This was supposed to be a uh, three-quarter ton um, tapered joint there, but as you can tell, I can't even go through the threads. And this what this is what was there in the first place, and uh, that's a lot smaller. This is a three-quarter ton, so this must be a one ton. I will have to uh, drill that out. Um, so I'll have to buy one of those uh, tapered drill bits to do that, which uh, is fine. That's a uh, beefier than I thought it would be anyway, so it uh, brings that angle over more and I think that'll line up better So that's what I'll do with the steering and then I'm gonna probably get the center link, which is this Custom made because it is narrower. I thought about cutting that and trying to use that but uh, This angle here is bad all right next thing. So this is the uh, Sway bar from the three-quarter ton. I uh, cut it and notched it and welded it and possibly we'll use it so we'll see what happens it'll go right underneath here i've already measured it there's some bolt holes i'll probably use and then this hole oh, right there that's where the link will come up and over and around so that's where the sway bar is going to go okay next i bought some new tires so these tires here I got with the Fabtech lift is of that three quarter ton that rolled. It is a uh, 315 75 16 and I believe it's like a, a 34 inch tire uh, and their tread isn't that deep. And so, you know, as in the tire itself, it, it may be bigger than this, but with the tread, this is a lot bigger. So... This is a 35 inch tire and if you can kind of see that it's about an inch taller than that one um, But I imagine as soon as I put air in it, it's gonna it's gonna get a little bit taller But I'm not really sure that, of how much So the Toyo tires I was looking at a ton of tires I went on priority tire I think is what it's called and I was gonna buy just a cheap old tire and just say screw it but this is probably my all-time favorite dot tire i have seen people wheel with this tire and there's a guy i knew that had a cherokee and he had uh i think it was 35s 
uh, probably this exact same tire on his Cherokee. And we were wheeling in a group. There's three Cherokees there. And there were two obstacles that were really hard. Like they were spinning and uh, some people had to be towed off. But he like barely even spun. His front axle didn't flex too much, but his rear axle flexed a lot. And he went right over it. I mean, it was like no big deal. And watching him wheel with this, I it's always been in my mind. So this is a rated for like a three quarter ton or a one ton tire. It can do like 3,600 pounds per tire. With all the, the 35 inch tires that I saw, that could handle, I think, the most weight out of all of them. I was reading some um, blogs and stuff on this tire of racers and everyone that had raced these tires, no one reported flats. Uh, the, the compound, if you look at this, just my thumb pushing it, that is soft. I like that a lot. I mean, uh, maybe you can, I mean, sure. It's just rubber as in it's a brand new tire, but it, it feels really sticky as it is. Um, and uh, has really good uh, side lugs on the sides. Um, the Nitto, I was going to buy a Nitto because I love how much they support racing. But when I went to Walmart.com, these were like $40 cheaper. Out of six tires, I saved $477 uh, than buying it anywhere else. Walmart.com has awesome prices for tires. If you're going to pick up tires go there uh the lug of it is about 10 inches but if you go like this it's about uh i don't know 12 and a half just like they say but uh they support a lot of racing baja all that use it it's a very awesome tire i was listening to, to one review on it and instead of some tires will do tire companies will do like probably you can see this right here this is probably what they do but they'll do like a green tire on the bottom and they'll put it up and they'll stick it up and they'll make the tread this one is built all with the same i mean you can see this line here but this is all built with the same piece of rubber instead of having a green tire and then and then putting a a, a tread on it this one is built with it with one uh one run i guess you could say and uh they have uh, this is the other selling part I really like about it, but they have a rim protector right here. So when you put your bead locks on it, the bead lock is going to inset a little bit and that rubber is going to protect your bolts and things. So that was a huge selling point for me. I mean, if you come over here on this tire, it does have a little bit, but definitely not as much. I mean, after that truck rolled, you can kind of still see there's rocks in that rim. But uh, this one's even even uh, more stout. I mean, that is that's impressive. So because of these selling points, I had to buy this tire. Supposedly this knock helps knocks the mud out, um, but it's an old tread pattern and compound that is proven. Uh, I'm really excited to run these tires, but uh, that's it. I can't wait for my beadlocks to come in. These are my sponsor. This is a Dirty Life Wheels, and I had to have these wheels. It took me a few months to get them because they were all out of them because they were really popular, I guess. And uh, for them to finally get them to me, it, it took a couple months. But uh, how you can get them, see here's a ring here. This is just like a, a, a plastic beauty ring to where you can run this on like your truck. And... Uh, all you have to do is ditch that and you buy separately a metal ring. I like how it says uh, dirty life on the, on the edges there. And then you can make your wheel a beadlock. So this is like a dual purpose wheel. If you just wanted to buy them, stick them on your truck and you have the option later just to buy the ring. They are very competitively priced. Uh, compared to other beadlocks and they're quite possibly the best looking beadlock out on the market um, I absolutely loved their life when they said that they would take me on I uh, became absolutely ecstatic so 
anyways, uh, those will be on the on these tires, looking dead sexy against the red. Okay, next, um, these are not a sponsor, but I did buy them. Uh, this is a universal anti-rock John Curry kit. If you know anything about John Curry, he races at uh, at the uh, King of the Hammers or Ultra Four. And this one is 36 inches wide. And the reason why I got this is because I could not find anywhere to put an anti-sway bar that's longer uh, under my blazer. And I'll show you why I chose this. Okay, hold on. Okay, so here's the deal. From outside to outside is like 40 inches i believe 40 and a half of the spring which when you look at the shackle here that's basically outside to outside on the frame and then when you look like this you can see the frame dives in right here from the top to the bottom so trying to get a anti-rack bar i thought about putting it right here but when it swings up it's going to hit here so I couldn't put it there. I thought of putting it under so it could attach here, but when it swings up, it'll hit that cross member there. And then I thought about putting it across here, which I was really close to doing, but the space that right there, look at the metal here, there's just not enough space to put the bar there. I thought about putting it here, but then once again, there's not enough room for the length for it to, to go. And I'm like, man, there's no place I can put this anti-rat bar so this is where i'll put it you have your cross member here and see how that all goes up the whole tub goes from the bottom there and jumps up a good 12 inches and then you have all that space that real estate up there so i'm going to do like a uh, uh right across here i'll attach it to there and there It'll stick out, it'll come out right about there and attach right there. And then it'll be like that. And then when it goes up, it'll have plenty of space. All I need is like six inches to go up, to up travel and then down travel would be plenty. And if you see, you know, uh, this would be in the middle of a circle as your axle is going, it's, it's moving like this. And where the anti-rat bar is right there, it's also moving like that. So you're not gonna, invert that anti-rat bar at all so that's actually the best place i can put it and i think it'll work really good okay next all right let's go here this is the next item i bought and uh this is ps there it is psc steering components and here is my new steering box uh and this will be the orbital of a, well, steering box as well as orbital, of a hydro assist. And this is exactly the same that they use in the Jeep Cherokee. So just like the transfer case, the uh, gearbox is the same as the Jeep Cherokee. So that's universal for what we're doing. And then I have a RAM. And when you're, when you're purchasing the RAM, you need to uh, tell them how much it, you know, from from lock to lock of the steering, how much your your steering bar moves, and it was uh, five and three quarter. So they built this for five and three quarter, and they'll do a different size diameter of RAM, uh, 35 inch tires and below, and 35 inch tires and up. I picked the 35 and up. This is a cooler. These are various fittings. Uh, as well as there's a reservoir and a uh, power steering pump. So the, uh, here's the reservoir, it's actually really nice. This will go anywhere. And what I'll do is after I uh, remove probably the, the uh, steering box, I'll probably stick it about here. So I may redesign or just all out remove my intake. I really don't know what I'll do with that, but uh, It'll go in here somewhere wherever I can find it, possibly right where that water jug is. All right. So uh, this next one, it's just a cooler for the power steering fluid. And I mean, it's cool looking. Other than that, I have no idea really where to put it. And you can see all the fins of that right there. 
that'll help the the heat pressures or the heat temperatures of the fluid yeah, you can see that and uh, the power steering pump is much larger than stock and uh, and stronger by the way and uh, that's what this one is right here and this power steering pump is also the same i believe as the cherokee so a lot of this kit that i got is is the uh, universal for both uh, pull this out and it's uh, and you can see that it's fairly large and it's already um tapped and ported for the hydraulic lines uh, as well as that uh, power steering box as well so i thought about drilling and tapping what i have but uh i don't know i really got sick of everything and, and trying to do everything and time and i just can't um so that's where i'm at right now today i'm going to clean all of this up drop the cage start working on the oil pan gasket fix that leak and then i'll start that uh, lunchbox locker but okay i think this design is pretty simple i just took off four bolts and put the jack underneath of it and slowly dropped it the a-arms are still kind of uh in there even though the bolts are out but uh, you can see that how the whole cradle just fell out which is kind of nice i'm gonna pry those a-arms out and then slide it out all right check it out the uh Oh, whatever it's called. <laughs> Lock right is in. I sure hope it works. Next gears. And uh, put this mess back together. <laughs> Holy crap. So I just got my order from East Coast Gear and Axle. They sent me the uh, full rebuild kit for this nine and a quarter GM IFS. Uh, differential and let me show you what we've been working on so this is the passenger side axle shaft and in these axles you have a 33 spline and you have this uh, actuator that when you push your push button four wheel drive that is how it engages for your four wheel drive and if you've seen anything or read anything on these diesel forms the uh, uh, Duramax diesel when they're pulling with tractor poles they'll they'll break these pretty easy, especially after a modified uh, differential. So I didn't want this to uh, to break or anything. I was thinking about welding it, um, at least back here, uh, just to keep it engaged at all times, less likely of a problem. But when I called East Coast Gear and Axle and asked them about the rebuild kit, and I said, hey, you know, I did read about solid axles like this um do you guys have them or anything and and there are diesel places that will make this or, or one by the way i think they call it a true lock uh, axle shaft but they are solid chromoly i don't need solid chromoly especially how big these these suckers are but apparently these are stock in the h2 hummers they're all wheel drive and they don't have the push button four wheel drive and so i mean if you look there they're the same height and they are a 33 spline so east coast gear and axle said hey we have a used one we do sell these things new by the way so if you guys are planning on doing this go to east coast gear and axle and you can buy these they're the h2 hummer all-wheel drive shafts but you take these out and then put these in place and you will not have that weak link so uh they said well we have a used one we'll sell this to you for really cheap and uh, i got it for like 75 bucks which is sweet um i don't care if it's a little used anyways uh that is what i'm gonna put in my diff and so remember these are lefty lucy or sorry uh, righty lucy lefty tidy the reverse threads and that's one reason why i got those I want to make sure that they're all new um i'll be putting that in you can see the ring gear here how much thicker the uh, 538 gears are to the stock i think they're 378 certainly not too sure but the that is quite huge and heavy but uh, here's a little c-clip that they put on this bottom one 
uh, right here that holds it inside the, the diff. But also they have it on the other side as well, inside the diff. And you can see right there, I will just stick that clip there and it'll kind of help secure, give a little spring when I slide it in so it won't come out. So it'll be just like stock. So uh, I'm very excited about that. And that is a must if anyone has a nine and three quarter. So in other words, or sorry, one quarter. So in other words, if anyone has a three quarter ton, uh, you, you want this to upgrade on your on yours. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and uh, work on this. So this differential would probably go down in history, well, in my book anyways, for being the easiest differential to ever go together. Um, not because it's an easy differential to work on, it is because I am extremely lucky. So what I did is I took this bearing puller and I took the old bearing off of the old pin or uh, pinion and there was a shim that was on here and I took that shim off and I put it on the new pinion and then when I put all the bearings together the pattern as you see here turned out absolutely perfect I mean look at that right in the center coast and drive I mean it was perfect the only thing that I had to do is on this side of the differential, there's like a nut, with a little tab. I back that off two spaces. And then the other side, I had to do the same to match it uh, so that it gave me proper back spacing on the pinion. So I don't know if you can hear that, but that's it. Uh, hitting the uh, ring and pinion together. So I have the proper uh, gap. And then that's the proper inch pounds on there and when you spin it everything spins and uh, that axle works and this is that h2 axle shaft from the all-wheel drive 33 spline and it fit right in there perfect uh the whole actuator on this back side is now gone which that's the solenoid and the actuators in there for the four-wheel drive it is i'm going to leave this here just to cover a hole but that whole thing will go into place. So uh, next, uh, I'm not gonna throw this up inside as of yet, because I still have to fix the leaky oil pan uh, gasket. And I did notice that one of the bolts was missing. That's probably why I was leaking, but I just uh, take took the whole thing down and uh, still need to put that back up. And uh, that'll be the next video. So thanks for watching.